Undertaker, The Last Ride, Chapter 4, The Battle Within, that's the title, was the recent edition in the Last Ride series. It is the fourth part, and next week will be the finale, Chapter 5. I wonder if he retires next week, but uh, this episode is a good one. I thought this, this, is, this works well, I think. In the bulk of the uh, series, it's kind of a lot of filler in the middle. I think the two most memorable episodes will be the first one and the last one because the first one was really good. Second was good. Third was okay. This was good. So two to four have been good. One was great. I think five will end up being great as well. So in this one, it starts off on a very sour note. It goes after the Saudi Arabia show. Uh, the Crown Jewel show, which was an utter disaster, it was a horrendous match. It was, um, I can't say anything much else about it I haven't said before. You can even go back and watch my review of the show. Um, it was a fucking mess, the match. Uh, the Undertaker and uh, Kane against Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Uh, just, uh, just a horrendous match. Taker says he after he... Uh, he walked backstage, he thought to himself, it's time to call it a day, and then he was so frustrated that he, uh, when he got on the phone, on the plane actually, home, he thought for sure he's done. And that did not necessarily happen. So, what happens later is, he would, after that horrendous match in Crown Jewel, he was done. He thought he was done, and... In his mind, because he was done, he wanted to do other things. And one thing he wanted to do was participate in a, or or go to an autograph session, a big autograph scene in StarCast. StarCast 2, and of course this is the night before AEW Double or Nothing, the last year, the first AEW show. And they don't mention AEW, but he does says the other company, and they clearly make reference to AEW. And the whole thing there is, I think Undertaker was booked probably through Conrad, who uh, who's married to Ric Flair's daughter. That's probably new. I think Conrad got the deal done. So he sets up the show, and he agrees to do the uh, the event. He's going to do the set, the autograph session, um, and he's going to appear at StarCast. The thing is, this, is, this isn't just StarCast. If it's not attached to AEW, it's attached to AEW. Conrad's working with AEW. And Vince McMahon's fear is to himself, what the hell are you doing? And he's unhappy, and Kurt Angle was also scheduled as well. Both Undertaker and Kurt Angle got pulled, and this started the big rift between Undertaker and Vince McMahon. Taker, uh, he basically describes the phone call as um, Vince uh, calling him, and uh, they, uh, you know, Undertaker being really angry. He he, he says you know, he knows uh, Vince would know he's not going to go to a new uh, company, but it uh, became a big deal between the two of them because it was revealed. It caused a rift, and they had a fall and go, and they didn't talk for a while. That's that's interesting. Undertaker did not talk to Vince after this. He was very angry at how everything went down. He was mad. Um, he made commitments, and I think he really wanted to do the appearance, and I think he was uh, really unhappy uh, that they did this to him. So um, that, that, that really caused a problem between Undertaker and Vince McMahon, that whole story. I remember, I remember hearing about it. I remember being really surprised that they even got Undertaker to do the show, but... Um, how it played out was uh, very memorable. So they, they then they showed some uh, early days of the Undertaker, the old um, those segments he would do, you know, in the cold in the graveyard and the in those uh, man made caskets, which were so cool. He used to make one for Yokozuna. He made one for Kamala. I remember there was the the red one for, or sorry, was it the the brown one for Yokozuna at the Rumble? There was the the black one uh, for. Um, I think it was Yokozuna at the Survivor Series. He used to make all those custom caskets. Those were the best Undertaker caskets. Those were my favorite. I love those Undertaker caskets. I wish we'd see more of them. Whenever they did a casket match now, unfortunately, they just do uh, you know, like an actual real casket. I miss those gimmick caskets. Those are so cool. Uh, but we see some of the old classic ones. We see Undertaker and Paul Heyman back in the day. And we even see uh, him and Paul Heyman ribbing each other. Or sorry, Paul Heyman. Paul Bear. Why would I say Paul Heyman? Paul Bear. Um, them ribbing each other. I got that confused. But uh, Paul Bearer 
appears in this episode. Of course, he's been dead for several years. He died in 2013. And uh, I guess he did interviews with the WWE Network in 2012, or actually the WWE in 2012. And it was shocking because I'm seeing Paul Heyman, or uh, fuck, Paul Bear. Why would I get that confused again? Paul Bear, Percy Pringle. I'm seeing Paul, and he looks so much healthier back then. It's sad. Because um, he would die a few months later in 2012. He looks he looks decent. It looks like he lost so much weight. Uh, I don't know if he had surgery. Uh, but it, it was it kind of bothered me because he lost so much weight. I did not had no idea that that happened. That Paul Bear had lost all that weight. And he just passed away a few months after that in uh, 2013. It's really unfortunate. It's really sad. But uh, seeing Paul Bear. Hmm, uh, it was cool seeing him in those, uh, those uh, interviews. It, it's really sad. Um, uh, I wish Undertaker. I wish they would have paid a bit more attention to Paul Bear because I really think he's such a big part of the Undertaker's act in his career. Next, uh, we find Undertaker and Vince are okay, and he goes to WrestleMania 35, and he's there, and he's. Um, this is the first time that he has not competed at a WrestleMania since WrestleMania uh, 2000. There was two that he missed. He missed WrestleMania 10 in '94, which I don't know what the reason was. I guess they had him take. Maybe he was injured, but that was the one he missed. And then uh, the second one he missed was uh, in uh, WrestleMania 2000, and that was uh, in that year. I don't know what the situation was. I think he was hurt. I think he was supposed to return on that show, but he wasn't healthy, so they pushed it back for Judgment Day. So those were the two ones he missed. And this would be the third. WrestleMania he'd missed in his active career in which he did not perform or appear. He did not appear at WrestleMania 35. There was no Undertaker on that show. And I remember thinking to myself, man, we do miss Undertaker a bit. And Taker seems to miss WrestleMania. He's he's really sad. You see the uh, you see him there. He's really bummed out he's not performing on this show. Um we see him uh he's dressed up in all black and he clearly wants to be out there. And he even talks about that uh, really in depth. And um he uh, he even has a boo boo face uh, on the uh, at like during the WrestleMania match, and he's clearly didn't want it to be there. And there's even a funny moment in which he did not bring his gear for Mania 35 weekend. You see him talking to Vince Taker for whatever reason. He says, "I'm not bringing my uh, gear," and when he does that, it's pretty surprising for Vince because Vince booked him on Raw. Vince wants him on Raw. Taker says yes. But Undertaker does not have his gear. So what Undertaker has to do is he actually has to fly back to Texas during WrestleMania weekend, then fly back to New York, get his gear, and of course he'd appeared on Raw when he attacked Elias. But uh, we did see him uh, backstage, and uh, he clearly missed uh, not being able to wrestle there, um, wrestle at WrestleMania 35, but he did appear at Raw. And it's interesting because it was a cool moment when he showed up on Raw. Fans liked him a lot. It was a cool thing. And then uh, we see him interacting. I didn't know how close he was with Mark Henry. Supposedly, they uh, they live close to each other in Austin, Texas, and their kids know each other. I did not know that. I'm surprised uh, that Taker and Henry... Um, oh, I knew they were friends. I didn't know they were that good friends. Uh, but we see him interacting with Kane, interacting with uh, all the other you know uh, wrestlers there. Uh, that we see uh, during WrestleMania weekend. It's cool seeing him on Raw, and we see him interact with a lot of the younger talent, interacting with Charlotte, uh, with uh, The New Day. We saw him talk to them at Access. Of course, that's Kofi's big weekend. It was cool seeing him, uh, you know, how much respect they have for The Undertaker. That was uh, that was nice. And there was also a cool moment seeing him with his family at Access. And everything's happy. Things are upbeat. He seems like he's, uh, you know, he's okay with how his career is going. And then the nightmare happens at Goldberg at Saudi Arabia yeah, last year, about a year ago. Um, one of the most worst matches ever. It's a mess. What happens early in the match is Goldberg cuts himself open bad, and I think he gets a concussion. And there's two nightmarish spots. Uh, Goldberg almost paralyzes the Undertaker with a jackhammer. That was horrendous. Undertaker got hurt bad. His back was all jacked from it. It was a it was a bad spot. It was basically a brain buster, and it was horrible. It was dangerous. Undertaker almost paralyzed Goldberg. Didn't talk about that when he hit him with the tombstone. Goldberg's face was so down near the mat. It was almost like Austin taking that to that pile driver from Owen Hart when he got his neck broken. It was a disaster. Then Goldberg tries to go for a tombstone. Or Undertaker just tries to roll out of it and. They both fall down. There's just botch after botch. It's a horrendous match. Taker's frustrated. He just chokes them. Goldberg, he gets him about one inch off the mat. He pins him. 
Undertaker's just furious. He's so mad at this. He is, oh, such a horrendous match. Um, yeah, he's really embarrassed by it. He's mad. He's really mad. And uh, when he's on the flight home from Saudi Arabia, he wants to be done. Um, and he had already agreed. Uh, so actually, I got that mistaken. It didn't happen after the DX match. He was embarrassed after that. But the Goldberg match, he wanted to be done. He was uh, he he didn't want to wrestle anymore. He was embarrassed by it. But however, he had agreed to the tag match at Extreme Rules. And I'd always assumed, I'd heard the story that he wanted the tag match at Extreme Rules. He requested it for, uh, to Vince because he wanted a redemption after that match. Well, I guess he was already scheduled. Uh, he teamed up with Roman Reigns and he beat Drew McIntyre and Shane McMahon. Uh, that, was a, that was a cool moment. That was actually a good matchup. Um, also, once I mentioned under parts, Undertaker told Shawn Michaels privately that he wished he would have been able to retire alongside Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 26. Um, that's surprising. I did not hear that. Uh, he said that would have been a great way to go uh, 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 to go out. And he's kind of jealous of Shawn because he always wanted that great send-off. And that, that, was, uh, that was surprising I actually heard that. And he even told Vince he was retiring after Extreme Rules 2019. He tells him I'm done, and that would not happen. Um, so I thought overall it was well done. I liked I like seeing him. Uh, they show him back in Austin, Texas, with his family, and how the episode ends is they see they show him talking to AJ Styles. Uh, I think at one of the events they're talking backstage, and that's how the episode ends. Of course, it leaves us on a cliff, cliffhanger. We know what's happening next. I don't know if he's going to retire because he could. Because that Boneyard match was a hell of a matchup. I'm going to go watch that again before uh, the next episode. But that could have been it for The Undertaker. That would have been a cool way to go out. Um, it would have surprised me. I think this that could be it for him. That, that, that could have been it. Because um, he really got a great way to go out. I don't think he's probably not going to get another one as good as that. So he might just, you know, he got that opportunity. He might just take it to uh, go out on the, on the high note. So... Um, that could be, and it's interesting with Taker. It could be a situation where he wants to just be the guy. If Vince calls him, he'll just do him a favor and do a show every now and then. He'll just never retire. He could do that too. But uh, the way like, he got a really good opportunity, so I, I'm interested to seeing how the finale happens next week. This was a very good episode. I enjoyed it overall. I think Taker Mark Calloway comes off really likable here. I liked him a lot here. I thought Michelle McCool came off likable too here. I thought this was a good uh, lead into the finale next week, and I think he should retire. I think this would, next week would be a great way to announce he's done. That was just a fantastic ending, that match with AJ. Um, I think it would be a really cool ending. I really think that would be really, really cool um, if he announces his retirement. This could be his big retirement send-off, this, this whole special. Um, I thought this was really well done. And I, uh, I I really liked it. I thought this was a good episode. And um, I'm really looking forward to what happens next week in uh, the finale of The Last Ride. <laughs>